Welcome to CR Church. I'm Jenny and this is Jake and we're on staff here. We want to thank you so much for joining us today. We are in our new building. It's still in renovation, but we are going to start shooting more stuff here and we want you to see it and we want you to be following us along with the remodel. And then we have an awesome service for you today. We have two songs in worship and then we're going to go into a time of giving where we're going to give generously. And then Pastor Brian's going to come up and he has a message that is just for you. And keep sending in your prayer requests and your praise reports. We love praying for you guys. Our prayer team is incredible. Mm -hmm. And we love celebrating when you have a praise report. So keep sending those in. Yes. And again, we thank you from Crossroads Church so much for joining us. Y'all enjoy this service. Hey, good morning. Thank you all so much for joining with us. We are so excited. See, our worship team is excited to worship the Lord with you this morning. As we worship, I want to challenge you to think about carrying your worship through every day this week. Grab onto a song, and it doesn't even have to be a song, but just constant praises coming out of your lips to the Lord. Our worship is about worshiping Him every day, continually. And I want to read to you out of Psalm 34. It says, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak His praises. I remember uh, working as a, a dental assistant and there was this lady that I worked with and I love her dearly. And she would sing the Lord's praises. She would sing hymns uh, from room to room as she went about her work. And it was such a witness to me. I was so uh, confused at the time and I was didn't know which way to go. And you know what? Her praise pointed me to the one who can make the difference. And your praise can point others to the Father above. So this morning, I want you to get up, get excited. Let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and take it with you throughout the week. The scriptures say that your praise will ever be on my lips. And that's what you and I need to do. Love you guys. Let's do it. Good morning! <laughs> we are so excited to worship with you this morning. See our worship team, we are, we are so ready. You know what? I want to read to you out of the Psalms. It says, Praise the Lord, for He has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust Him with all my heart. He helps me, and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out into songs of thanksgiving. This morning as we enter in, I want you to get your song ready. Sing it, shout it. I pray that your neighbors hear you singing in your living room. You know what? Let's enter in. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Whew, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord.
Good morning. I am so glad you guys are joining us. My, I'm Pastor Brian. I'm the lead pastor here at Crossroads Church, and we're going to get to continue our worship right now with our tithes and our offerings. And I am so excited that the Lord allows us to join in, in His mission. Now, tithing is, and, 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 and offerings are not just about bringing money back in. This is a heart issue. God wants to see if we trust Him enough to put Him first in our life in all of our things. And here's the thing. When we bring tithing offerings back in to the storehouse, it does this thing inside of us and it breaks this tendency that we have as human beings on this selfishness and, and the, this, this urge that we have just to gather for ourselves. This, this spirit of, you know, I i got to get all for me. No, being faithful in our tithes and offerings helps develop us into the character that God wants us to be. It also opens up blessings in our lives that you can't even imagine. I mean, the Bible talks all about it. If you, if you don't, I mean, you should dive into what the, the Word says about what just tithing alone does. I mean, it, I mean, it talks about opening up the windows of heaven and, and how He'll pour out blessings upon you. Proverbs 18, 16 says this, a gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. Now think about that for a moment. See, God has this great plan for your life and He wants you to experience all the things in your life. And I'm not telling you to, to, to give to get because that is never what we are. What I, what I want to see is I want to see you developed into the man or woman that God has called you to be. And part of that starts with putting God first in your life with all things. And that starts with, when it comes to money, our tithing. And, and whether we like it or not, Jesus talked more about money than he did heaven and hell combined. And if we believe all those scriptures about that, why wouldn't we believe the ones about tithing and offerings? So this morning, I want to see God open up blessings in your life and I want to see you become the men and women that God has called you to be and I want to see blessings overflow like you have never imagined and I've heard all things that you couldn't couldn't believe that what God has done in people's lives especially over this last year with people that were faithful in their tithing and their giving how God has just brought blessing after blessing in their life and I want to see that in your life too and when you give to Crossroads Church you help us go out and pour, be able to share the gospel of the good news to not only this community, but the communities here in Tennessee, to the nations, and to the world. And we, we want to spread the gospel like never before. Like we're on a mission to bring the name of Jesus to the forefront in our country and in our, and in our communities. So will you help us? Will you join in? Will you open up uh, and, and just be... Be faithful to what God has called you to do this morning. I want to pray over you. I want to, as we bring in our, our tithes and offerings, uh, the tithes is the first 10% that, that God asks you to bring in, that He puts in your hands, that He's asking you to be faithful with. The offering is above that. And I will tell you, God will pour out blessings and rebuke devour, devour when you are faithful in that. But I want to pray over you the tithes and offerings this morning. And and, and there's going to be ways that you're going to be able to see. There's a link here at the bottom of the screen. There's also, you can text the tithe. You can go to our website at MyCRChurch. And, and, you, can, and you, can, uh, you can hit the donate button there. So it, we make it real easy. There's also a mailing address that you can mail, mail your physical check into. So let me pray over you. And let's, let's, let's be a part of what God's mission is, is this morning. Father God, I thank you that you give us the opportunity to join in on your mission. God, we, I thank you that you give us the choice. And we get to choose, Lord, to be a part of your mission. It's not just a dictator that's saying, you have to do this. It's a choice, Lord. And we're thankful that you are a loving God that allows us to be a part of what you are doing. God, help us be faithful stewards. Lord, help us just... Uh, be able to be blessed so we can go be a blessing to other people. Lord, help, help our hearts to be right this morning. Let us be encouraged and let's be excited to be a part of what your mission is, Lord. And as a church, Lord, help us be good stewards and divide, the, divide these loaves of fish that you're bringing back into the storehouse so we can go spread the gospel 
like we have never spread it before. God, we love you. We praise you. We give you all honor. We give you all glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. I am so excited about today. We are we're continuing our rebuilding uh, sermon series this week, and Nehemiah. We're still in we're in Nehemiah chapter six. So if you want to get your Bibles ready, we're going to be diving into that this morning. But I hope that you have come this morning with a heart of expectation. I hope that you are coming just ready to see what God wants to say to you this morning. I hope you are ready and you're looking for the opportunities that God can speak to you in your life and that you can take what these scriptures are saying and you can put them into practical application into your life. See, I believe, I am a firm believer in this, that you can know the scriptures. You can, you can have a whole bunch of knowledge, but unless you're willing to put them into everyday life and make them practical application and allow the scripture to change your life to to become who God is calling you to be and, and to allow the scriptures to change you to be the person or the man or the woman that God has called and wants to use, that knowledge is not going to do you any good. See, the, the, the Bible gives us these, these words of wisdom not just so we can know them, but so that we can apply them. And last week we talked about Nehemiah in chapter 5 and how debt was keeping the people from being able to do what God had called them to do. That debt was the hindrance that, that, that was keeping them from fulfilling all that God saw that He wanted them to do. And that does so much in our lives too. Debt is a, is a hindrance in and the enemy knows that he can still use these same tools. Like, he's not dumb. Like, the enemy uses the same tools over and over and over again to get us off track and distracted. And today, we're going to dive into Nehemiah 6. And, and boy, I'm telling you, you better hold on because this is a good word. And God is wanting to speak to you something specific. See, God, He, he is in this kingdom-building mindset and right now we are rebuilding what God has called us to do. And God has this great mission that he wants us to be a part of. And I hope you're ready to dive in and join in to what God wants us to do. So let's open up our Bibles in chapter 6 of Nehemiah. It says, Sanballat, Tobiah, and Gesenim the Arab, and the rest of the enemies found out that I had finished rebuilding the wall and that no gaps remain. See, they had already been talking about that there's no way Nehemiah can do this. Nehemiah ain't smart enough to do this. Nehemiah ain't got enough resources to do this. But yet he finished. Because you can do all things through Christ when he's called you to do it. Though we had not yet seen, set the, up the doors and the gates, so Sanballat and Gesem sent a message asking me to meet with them at one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But I realized they were plotting to harm me. So I replied by sending this message to them. I am engaged in a great work, so I cannot come. Why should I stop working to come meet with you? Four times they sent the same message, and each time I gave the same reply. The fifth time, Sambalot's service came with an open letter in his hand. And this is what it said. There is a rumor among surrounding nations and Gesem tells me that it's true that you and the Jews are planning to rebel, and that's why you are building the wall. According to his report, you're planning to be their king. He also reports that you have appointed prophets in Jerusalem to proclaim about you. Look, there is the king of Judah. You can be very sure this report will get back to the king. So I suggest that you come talk it over with me. 
I replied, there is no truth in the part of your story. You are making up the whole thing. They were just trying to intimidate us, imagine, imagining that they could discourage us from stop the work. So I continued the work with even a greater determination. Later, when I went to vi visit Shemaiah, the son of Delilah, and his grandson, Mephibola, who was confined at his home, he said, let, let us meet together inside of the temple of God and bolt the doors shut. Your enemies are coming to kill you tonight. But I replied, should someone in my position run from danger? Should someone in my position enter the temple to save his life? No, I won't do it. I realized that God had not spoken to him, but he had uttered this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sambalot had hired him. They were hoping to intimidate me and make me sin. Then they would be able to accuse me and discredit me. Remember, oh my God, the evil things that Tobiah and Sambalot have done. And remember Nadiah, the, the prophet and all of the prophets like her who have tried to intimidate me. So on we began. When our enemies and the surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and they were humiliated. They realized this work had been done with the help of our God. During those 52 days, many letters went back and forth between Tobiah and the nobles of Judah. For many, Judea had sworn allegiance to him because of his father-in-law, Nika, son of Ariah, and his son, Jehonanan, was married to the daughter of Methuselah and Barakah. They kept telling me that Tobiah's good deeds and they had told him everything I'd said and Tobiah kept sending threatening letters to intimidate me. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this word that you've given us. God, I thank you for letting us dive into your word. Lord, I just ask that you will let each and every message that we, that we dive into, Lord, change our lives and change our relationship with you, to deepen our relationship with you, Lord and to help grow us to be the men and women that you've called us to be. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Nehemiah knew that, that when people saw what he was doing, because he was on a mission from God, that they were going to distract him. They did not want him to complete this work because they didn't love the Lord. They weren't on the same mission. They weren't working for the same God. And here's the thing, this message is all about doing a great work. People will always try to distract you when you are doing a great work. You, when you're on a mission from God, there are going to be people that are going to try to distract you, that are, try, that are going to try to intimidate you, they're going to try to frighten you, they're going to try to get, do all things to get you off the task of working for the Lord. There is a reason that why there's 365 times in the Bible, the Bible says, do not fear. Because the enemy uses fear to distract us. If he can't put us in debt, if he can't distract us with other things that get us off target, he's going to distract us with fear. If he can, you cannot fear. You have to know that God is watching over you when you're on a mission from him. But there is always going to be opposition. And ne Nehemiah knew this. Nehemiah knew that the enemy was trying to intimidate him and distract him. And when I was reading this passage of Scripture, it reminded me of a great man of God. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of men of God that we look at. But Nehemiah, Nehemiah did not get off task. He was not willing to, to go off and to meet with somebody. Nehemiah knew what his task was. He knew what his mission was. He knew what the vision that God had given him to be. So he stayed on task. Here's what you have to do when you know what the mission that God has called you to be. And it's very simple. And we'll talk about that in a moment. When you know what the mission that God has called you to be, you have to keep your eyes on Jesus and you have to keep pushing forward. You cannot let fear distract you. Elijah was a great man of God. And in 1 Kings 19, Elijah had just whooped on 400 prophets of Baal. Like Elijah was a bad man. Like Elijah, he just, he tore up these other prophets. But yet, in, Elijah, in 1 Kings 19, 
It says, when Ahab got home, he told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, including the way he had killed all the prophets of Baal. Elijah done killed all those prophets. So Jezebel sent his, this message to Elijah. May the God strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you killed them. Elijah was afraid and he fled for his life. And he went to Beersheba, a town in Judea, and he left his servants there. And then he went on alone in the wilderness, traveling all day, and he sat down under a solitary broom tree and he prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors and I'm ready and I who have already died. Are you kidding me? You've got this great man of God that had just had this incredible battle. And, and that yet he gets a letter from a crazy lady and he's scared to death. He believed the lie. But unlike Nehemiah, who continued his work, who stayed the task that wasn't going to be distracted, Elijah left. He went off. He, he, he isolated himself. And here's the thing. You cannot isolate yourself when you get afraid. You've got to continue your work. You've got to walk through it. You've got to push through it. I don't know about you guys. Have, there's a lot of times in life that you'll have conflict. And conflict is not always bad. But the quicker you resolve whatever conflict you are in, the less the enemy will play in your mind. See, the, the battlefield is up here. The battlefield is really not against physical things or the battle is not against flesh and blood. The battle between Elijah and Jezebel was not this physical battle. But Elijah thought it was. And that's the thing that we have to be careful about. We have to keep our spiritual battle ready we have to be we have to have got our weapons sharpened up and that's knowing the word of god we have to have our spiritual armor on every day so that we can attack this battle and we don't let the enemy play in our mind i don't know if you've ever had things go on at work that you know that something you got this conflict going on or maybe you got a conflict with a friend and, the, and you, you start building it up in your mind on how bad it could be. And, oh my gosh, the what ifs. And what, what is this going to do? And then, and then when you go into the conflict and you finally have a, a word with your friend or whatever it is at work, and then you realize, boy, that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. See, that's what happens. That's what happened with Elijah. Elijah let the enemy play in his mind and he left and he went and got distracted. He went and he, he, become, he went out to be alone. Don't do that. See, you got you to gotta dive into your word. You gotta, that's why it's so important that we have godly people around us to encourage us. That's why it's so important that we have people praying for us. That's why it's so important that we're a, we're, we belong to a body of believers in a relationship and that we band together because the enemy can't get us if we're not alone. But when we get alone, all kinds of things can start happening. Nehemiah continued the great work. Elijah ran off. And let me tell you, you have to be more like Nehemiah. When you know what your mission is, when you, when you know what your purpose and your mission is, see, Nehemiah knew what his mission was. God had given Nehemiah a very specific purpose. He was to build a wall. He was to build a wall for Jerusalem so that the wall could protect the people that God had chosen. That was the purpose. The mission was to build a wall. The purpose was for the wall to protect his city and his land that he had chosen. And when you know what your mission is and you know, you know what your purpose is and you know who sent you, you also, if you know him well enough, you know that he's going to protect you. And see, Nehemiah wouldn't let the distractions of the world pull him off task. He knew what his mission was. His mission was to build a wall. Fear was not going to keep him from building the wall. He wasn't going to move off of the wall. He kept his focus on his mission. And you got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Nehemiah knew who sent him. He knew that if God sent him to it, 
that, and, and, that, and Nehemiah had enough relationship with God that when he started speaking to a false prophet, let me tell you, there are false prophets out there. Not everybody speaks into your life is sent from God. And you've got to know the difference. The only way you're going to know the difference is spending time with God and knowing God's voice. And if what they're speaking lines up with the Word of God and, what, and, the, and the message that God has given you, then yeah, they're probably from God. But if, it, if, if you get in a contradictory message by, by people speaking into you and it doesn't line up with the Bible and it doesn't line up with what God has spoken to you, they're probably not of God. But no matter what, Nehemiah would not be moved. He was doing a great work. He knew that he was doing a great work. And let me tell you how you know what your great work is. And so let me give you some easy examples of how to stay on task. First off, you need to get yourself a journal. And, and you, you need to start writing things down. When God speaks to you, when you're in your prayer time, you need to write things down. You may say, well, I don't, I don't know what to write down. Ask God what to write down. But when God starts speaking to you and He starts talking to you, you need to write those things down. Why is that important? Because when you're in the times of, of confusion and you may be wondering, did God really say that? You can go back to where God spoke to you. And when God does these great things in your life, and God does great things in all of our lives, God has great moments that He does these amazing miracles in our lives. We've all had them if we spent any time with God at all. If we've been walking with the Father any time at all, we have seen miracles in our life. If we will write those down so that when during times of trouble and hard times we can go back and look at them and say, you know what, God did this back then, I know He can take care of this situation because He's already done this in my past. And if you can go back to those, it builds your faith back up. And the other thing is, is every time God does something great in your life, you go tell somebody about it. You start sharing the victories that God does. Because when you start going through hard times, your friends and the people around you will start saying, hey, didn't God do that before you in your past? I thought you told me God did that. Oh yeah, he did do that. It will help build up your faith. It will help encourage you. The other thing too is, is any gift and talent that God has given you, you need to use to spread the gospel of the good news. God gives each and every one of us gifts and abilities. He gives us all things that are special to each one of us, and He wants us to use those gifts to further the kingdom of God. You may be asking, what's my mission? I don't know what my mission is. What's my purpose for the mission? Well, you have to know those things, but you know, God was pretty specific with each and every one of us when He left this earth. When Jesus left this earth, He said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go and I want you to tell people about me. I want you to spread the gospel of the good news. And I want you to make disciples, baptizing them, casting demons out, healing them in my name. Spreading the gospel of the good news. And there's no greater mission than that right there. Each and every one of us are called to be messengers for Christ. That is our main purpose in life. We are called to be message bearers. Now, God gives us different opportunities while we're going through life to do that. He gives us different positions to fulfill that requirement. But each and every one of us have a specific mission. And that mission is to spread the gospel of the good news. Our purpose in that mission is is it so more people can come to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's your ultimate mission and purpose. Now there's going to be ones that come up in your life that help you get to that mission and purpose, and you're going to have other missions in, to get to that main mission. But that's your ultimate mission in life. 
And God gives each and every one of us the abilities and talents to do that. So this morning, you need to keep your eyes on Jesus. You need to keep focused. Don't let the world distract you with all the things going on around you. Don't let fear intimidate you to, to stop telling people about Jesus Christ. Don't let fear keep you off building and laying up treasures in heaven. Don't let fear do that to you. Don't let people distract you. Don't let them speak things in your life that are untrue. And when people try to distract you and get you off task, tell them, no way, man, I'm, I'm doing a good work right now. God has called me to a mission and a purpose. I have a purpose in life. Don't let yourself get alone because that's the only time Elijah wanted to die. And that's the only time that Elijah wanted to give up and quit because the enemy had played so much in his life that he didn't know how to continue. But let me tell you, God wants to, he's got, a, he's got the best plan for your life already mapped out. All he's doing is waiting for you to be a part of it. He's wanting you to be on this great journey. He's, 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 he's waiting for you to say, yeah, I'm ready to, to do this great work. I'm ready to join the team. I'm ready to, I'm ready to be a warrior. For Christ. I'm ready to go out and do battle against the enemy. I'm ready to go see people's lives change. I'm ready to see, see the mission of God fulfilled in my life. And God wants the best for you. After all, He sent His Son to die for you. He gave His all for you. Now, he's waiting for you to accept him and say, yes, Lord, I'm ready to be on the team. But are you ready? Are you ready to do a great work? So often, I think many of us know about Jesus. We know a lot about him. We, we know who he is. We, we've heard a lot of stories about him. We've, we've We've maybe even had a, you know, spiritual encounters with him. But we don't know him. We don't spend time with him. So I'm asking you this morning, if you want to see something different in your life, if you're ready to be on the team, if you're ready to do a great work for the Lord, and we need you, there's a lot of world out there that needs hope, and they need Jesus. There's a lot of people that need us to start rebuilding this spiritual wall. And maybe you knew Jesus, and maybe you walked away, or, or maybe, maybe you just not, you have known about him, and you never really had a relationship with him. Well, this morning, this is the time to change that. And it starts with this simple prayer, this prayer that says, Lord, I give up. I, I want you to lead my life. I want to be on the plan that you have chosen for me. I want to be on your team to complete your mission. I want to bring glory to you in all things of my life. If you're ready to do that, or you're ready to come back to that, I want you to pray this prayer after me, and I want you to believe it in your heart. So, Father God, I am a sinner and I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. I do believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, died on a cross, and rose from the grave for my sins. And I'm asking you to become Lord of my life. Jesus, I can't do it without you, and I'm asking you to do it for me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, we want to get excited with you. We want you to let us know, so please fill out the contact information below. Also, I want you to share this message at 1030. I want you to share this with everybody because we want to see the gospel of the good news spread like wildfire throughout our country. So, so share this video at 1030. Let's, let, let's, let's give God an opportunity 
for everybody to hear the message about Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for being with us this morning. As always, we do have a free gift for you, so it's Ramsey Plus. If you'll send us your email, we will send you a free gift of Ramsey Plus. It's a whole bunch of budgeting tools and uh, ways to help you get out of debt if you are in debt. It gives you a plan to, to be on track. It's even got free tax software that you can file your taxes with. Um, it's, it's got um, things to help you do your wheels. It's, it's got programs to help you teach your children about money. It's free. So just let us know because we want to make that available for you. Also, want to pray a prayer blessing over you like we do every week. And I believe this is really important um, because this is, this is what God told Moses. He said, go tell Aaron. He said, I want, you to, I want Aaron to pray this over the people. And when he does, I want, I'm going to bless them too. And I want to see blessings in your life. So this is the prayer. It's in number 624. It says, may the Lord bless and protect you. And may the Lord smile and be gracious to you. And may the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. God bless you. I can't wait to see you next week. It, I'm on Facebook every morning. If you want to join me for a, a quick devotional every morning, it's just to encourage you and to move you along. I'd love to see you in the mornings. But if I don't, I'll see you next week. God bless you. Have a great week.